Hey YouTube, it's Laura Rhinus, and I am here today to talk to you about a topic that is near and dear to my heart, and that is sleep. Now I have to confess that I had done an entire sleep video for you guys, and I did it from my bed, in my bed, in my pajamas. But when I went to upload it to YouTube, the quality was just really poor, the video was pretty shaky, and so I decided I'm just going to redo it. So, no video in my jammies, but the information will still be just as good. So what I've done is I have comprised a list of 10 things that you can do when you can't sleep or 10 things that you can do before you go to sleep to increase your chances of getting a good night's sleep. And so that is what I'm going to share with you today. Number one. Do something to try to relax yourself. In my case, that means taking a warm bath, bubbles, maybe candles going. Um, whatever it takes to relax yourself, do that well in advance of when you're planning to go to bed. Um, some people even find that exercise, you know, or going for a walk can kind of help to soothe or relax them, kind of help them to work out the kinks of the day, if you will. But I know that for other people, exercising right before bed is not good because it actually revs you up. So that's one of those that you may have to just try in order to find out kind of how it works for you. But that's number one. Do something to relax yourself. A bath or whatever that may be. Number two is deep breathing. And I think a lot of times during the day we become really not even aware or conscious of our breathing. And so one of the things you can do is to purposefully slow your breathing down. And you can do that by deep breathing. And I'll kind of walk you through a little demonstration of that today. But what you want to do is you want to inhale for five counts, you want to hold your breath or hold it in for five counts, and then you want to exhale for at least five counts. So in my case, I'll probably try to guide you through exhaling for seven counts. So what it looks like is inhale two, three, four, five, hold two, three, four, five, exhale two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And so what you're going to want to do is do that quite a few times or however many times it takes until you feel your breathing pattern just naturally kind of slow down and usually relaxation follows pretty quickly after you do those breathing exercises. So that is number two, deep breathing. Number three is create a relaxing atmosphere. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm sitting in bed with my laptop and I've got the bright lights on and maybe the TV is on too, and then I click off the light and I think somehow I'm going to find sleep. Well, sometimes that works, but other times not so much. So what I want to encourage you to do is do everything you can to make your environment suggest sleep. Whether that means lowering the lights, turning on a fan or some white noise, if that seems to help, playing music very quietly, whatever it is that starts to signal your body that it's time to slow down. Some people even like to burn candles to help create a relaxing atmosphere, so that may work for you as well. But again, do whatever you can to have your environment tell your brain it's time to slow down and to start the sleep process. Number three. Number four, read. I am an avid reader. I read all the time, but I also have many different books that I read, and I can admit I do have a selection of books that I read when I'm trying to relax and go to sleep. They're usually pretty easy reading. There's not a lot of exciting things that happen because I'm trying to get my body to unwind. They're probably not the most thought-provoking books, but they are something that kind of slows my mind and occupies my mind at the same time so that I can relax. And a lot of times I find that when I'm reading, my eyes just tend to kind of naturally start to close. So that's a tip for you. If um, you're a reader and you haven't ever tried that, give it a whirl and see how that goes. Number five, make the conscious effort and attempt to clear your mind. This can take a lot of work. I know sometimes for me, I get in bed at night and that's when I start thinking about things. That's when I start going through the day and kind of replaying what happened and, you know, thinking about how I feel about that. And what that can do sometimes 
is that can actually get you all hyped up again. So what you need to do is just try to block all of that from your mind. It's difficult sometimes, as I said, and you might need to be very, very purposeful and conscious of it. And what I suggest is having a little mantra or a little phrase that you repeat in your mind to help your mind think about that. Because as far as I know, we're not able to think two conflicting thoughts at the exact same time. So for example, a mantra that I might use is relax, 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 relax. It takes less memory than counting sheep. You know, you might figure, oh, where am I? I lost my place. You can use that one or sleep, sleep. Either one of those might work for you. It's worth giving it a try. Um, I know that they work for me. So that is um, number five, clearing your mind. Number six, try aromatherapy. A lot of people find um, certain scents are very soothing. Uh, some of those scents are lavender or vanilla can tend to be very soothing. Whatever it is for you, try to find something in that scent and have it with you as you're trying to relax. Maybe that's in the form of a candle. Just don't forget to blow it out. Um, or maybe it's an essential oil. Or maybe they make bed sprays that you can spray your pillowcase, lightly mist your pillowcase with. Try it out. Um, you can also go online and look for you know, some examples of scents that are supposed to relax and bring on sleep. So that might work for you as well. And number seven, meditate or pray or whatever it is that you tend to believe. Um, a lot of times what happens to me is before I'm even done, you know, with that process, I'm already asleep. And I think that's good too, because what this does is just kind of occupy your mind with something else. And, and it kind of takes the focus off of you and the fact that you're not sleeping or the worries or troubles that you've had in your day. So meditate or pray, number seven. Number eight, this is a fun one, cuddle up. Do you have a stuffed animal? maybe that you sleep with a teddy bear or maybe you're fortunate and you sleep with someone sometimes just snuggling up and holding on um, hearing another heartbeat feeling another person breathe next to you granted a stuffed animal doesn't do that but in a pinch that will work or a pet <laughs> sometimes that's all it takes to start you relaxing so cuddle up or snuggle up Number nine, this is one I have to mention, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it for obvious reasons. And I want to say first and foremost, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but some people find a little nookie nookie between the sheets to be relaxing in terms of afterwards. So, hey, that could be something that you could try if you're in such a predicament or such a situation. Moving on, not spending much time on that. And my final point is if all of these things fail, um, I would suggest keeping a sleep log or a sleep diary that you can kind of chronicle, if you will, um, your attempts at sleeping, how long it takes you to fall to sleep. If you wake up in the middle of the night and you can't get back to sleep, you can log that type of thing too. Um, and then once you've compiled enough info, you know, maybe a couple weeks, 14 days, um, you can bring that information to your doctor and they can work with you on that and see if there are any patterns that are maybe tied to activities before bed or maybe tied to if you're working out right before bed or foods that you've eaten. You know, if there's a connection, maybe your doctor can help you find that. And if all else fails, they may suggest trying a low dose prescription sleep medication. For some people that works really, really well, um, what I would say with that is make sure that you're only taking it and not sharing it with anybody else. And I also want to let you know that there are things you can do. Um, there are medications that you can take that are also over the counter too. So you could try either of those. There it is. Not in my pajamas, but I still shared the info, so I'm happy about that. But YouTube, that is my list of 10 things that you can do now to bring about sleep later, or even some things that you can do when you're unable to sleep. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video. More are definitely coming and I will talk to you again soon. Have a great day, YouTube.